Welcome to another Steinberg quick tip video. In this quick tip video, we're going to look at one of the very last processes in the recording chain, and that is bouncing down what we have inside of our project window for use in applications outside of Cubase. Perhaps you want to do a really quick mix down for a band at the end of a long day in the studio so they've got something to take home with them. Or maybe you're doing podcasts and you want to bounce everything down into a stereo file. You could even be at the end of a really long mix session and ready to bounce everything down into a stereo file to send away to be mastered. You can also bounce each channel individually, which is useful if you're collaborating with people with different doors. First I've highlighted all of my events, gone to transport and locators and set my locators to selection range. Now my locators contain all of the information that I want to bounce down. So you can see we don't have to start at zero or one. We can start wherever we want in the project. I usually try to make sure that my left locator starts on a bar. I also check my intro and outro. Now if my left locator starts on a bar and I'm working with someone else who's using a different door, then if they've got the correct tempo, it's easy for them to import it and match it up inside of their project. Let's go up to File and select Export and Audio Mixdown. This new window is the Export Audio Mixdown window. Let's do a quick overview. The first thing I'm doing is naming the files that I want to be exported. You'll notice I'm also putting a tempo marking in. You don't have to do this, but this has proven to be useful for me on so many different occasions. The next thing I'm doing is specifying a path. So this is where Cubase is going to save the bounced or rendered files. It can be on a local hard drive or it can be on an external hard drive. I have Dropbox connected to my computer so I can even bounce straight into my Dropbox folder and as soon as it's finished the bounce process, it starts syncing and uploading that to the Dropbox server. The naming scheme is quite important because if you're working with large batches of files, it's important that you name them in a logical manner. You can use the default or a custom scheme or create your own scheme and it's as easy as dragging attributes down into the results. It is really important to think carefully about your naming scheme, especially if someone else is going to be importing these tracks. Down below this we've got the file format. Now I find it a lot easier to email MPEG1, which is MP3 files to people, but if I need to send something away to be mastered, I'll use a WAV file or an AIFF file. If you have to send something away, make sure you check first to see what file format it should be in. It's also important to check the sample rate and bit depth but 48,000 and 24 bit is generally industry standard. The real time export button is necessary if you're using external instruments. So Cubase will play everything from start to finish and render it as it's playing. I would leave mono down mix split channels and left right channels alone unless you know that you specifically have to use them. You can import your bounce files into your pool or you can import them as audio tracks. You can open up these bounce files straight into WaveLab by selecting WaveLab in the post process. You can bounce any configuration of channels outside of Cubase. You might just want a simple stereo left right, in which case select stereo output. Perhaps you want to just bounce your group tracks down so you've got a few different submixes. You can move further down and bounce individual effects. You can bounce all of your virtual instruments and MIDI files. Group tracks are a fantastic option to bounce if you need to go somewhere else and do say a voiceover or a quick overdub because they'll still give you individual control over different elements of your song. If you've got a track that's getting mixed somewhere else then chances are you're going to need all of your stems. In which case you should tick every box. You can go to the boxes next to audio channels, instrument tracks and effects channels and group channels and tick those boxes to tick every box inside of those folders. Once you're done, select export and let Cubase do the hard work for you.